Hey Chemistry, Mrs. KJ here. I'm going to talk about the unit for lab and double displacement reactions. Now instead of calling these type of reactions double displacement, we can call them double replacement. And it means exactly the same thing. It all depends on what textbook you are using, and I will use both of them interchangeably. So let's talk about what a double displacement reaction is. And yes, you should be taking notes on this slide. So everything on this slide should be in your notes. So double displacement reaction is when two compounds combine, have a chemical reaction, and switch partners. So let's do an example while we go through the steps. There are three steps. Step one says... Write the charge or oxidation number as an exponent next to each element or polyatomic ion. What I mean by that, look at lithium. Lithium is in group 1, so it has one valence electron. It's going to lose that valence electron. So after it loses its valence electron, what is its charge? Plus 1. All right, now let's look at oxygen. Oxygen is over here in group 6. And in group six, they have six valence electrons. So what are they going to do to get a full outer shell and be stable? They want a total of eight. They have six, so they are going to gain two electrons. If you gain two electrons, your charge is a negative two. All right, let's do the same thing for magnesium and nitrogen. So what is the charge of magnesium? Magnesium is in group two. How many valence or outer electrons? Two. What is it going to do to get a full outer shell? Lose two. So its charge is positive two. Let's look at nitrogen next. So nitrogen is in group five. How does it get a full outer shell? It gains three electrons. So what is the charge? Minus three. So that was the first thing that we needed to do. That was step one. We wrote the charge or the oxidation number. The oxidation number is basically a fancy way to say the charge after the atom becomes a cation or anion. So write the charge as an exponent next to each element or polyatomic ion. In this example, do I have any polyatomic ions? No. Both compounds have two capital letters, so that tells me they have only two elements altogether and that tells me that it's just a compound. In this case, we have a one element from the left, one element from the right. So we have a metal and a nonmetal, and therefore we have what kind of compound? Ionic. All right, let's go ahead to step two. Step two, write the first cation as a reactant. Okay, so let's fix that. Oh, I am sorry about that. Um, let's fix that in your notes. We are not writing them as a reactant. They already are a reactant. Reactants are what we start with. And we want to write it as what we end with. So any ideas on what we call what we end with? We start out with the reactants. The reactants react and make products. All right. So, write the first cation as a product. So, cation means what? Cations are positive and anions are negative. So, let's take the first cation, which would be lithium. And lithium has a positive one charge and it is going to switch partners. Lithium is no longer going to be with oxygen because a chemical reaction happened. These are getting mixed up. So instead of lithium being with oxygen, is lithium going to be with magnesium or with nitrogen? Lithium will be with nitrogen. Why? Because in order to be attracted, you need a positive and a negative. All right, now it says to combine. So now I have lithium and I have nitrogen, and I want to make them into a new chemical formula. So I take the one, and it looks like cross-multiplying. I put it down below over here, and I take the three. It looks like cross-multiplying, and 
and I put the 3 down below here. And then I rewrite my entire answer so that it looks nice and neat. I would have lithium 3 N. And if you want to put a 1 down there just because it helps you, that's fine. But it's better if you don't. So Li3N. Now, I want you to notice something here. I want you to notice that over here, lithium had a 2. The only reason that lithium had this 2 right here is because it was with oxygen. And oxygen had a minus 2 charge. When I wrote lithium over here, I did not bring that 2 over here because this means I had two atoms of lithium and I have to start fresh. In this compound, I have three atoms of lithium. Now, if you're wondering how did you magically go from two to three atoms, just hang off on that question for now. We will get to it. It's another whole lesson which takes a while. So we have to just remember do one thing at a time. So right now you have to trust me, it did not magically appear. We will balance everything out later. In fact, balancing is like the magic word for how it happens. For now, let's just worry about making our equations. All right, so that was step two. Now we need to do step three. Repeat for other chemicals. Okay, so we have two chemicals, so we're going to separate them with a plus sign to show that we're moving on to our next chemical compound. And what do I have left? I have oxygen and magnesium. Which one do I have to write? First, have to write magnesium. Why? Because it's positive. We always write our positive cation first. Now, over here in the reactants, magnesium had a 3. Do I bring that 3 over here? No, because the 3 by magnesium was because of the negative 3 charge of nitrogen. So I do bring over magnesium's charge up on top. And now, magnesium is going to be with what element? With oxygen. And oxygen is going to be a minus 2 charge. And now we combine it. We do what looks like cross-multiplying. And that will bring down a 2 from the oxygen as a subscript for the magnesium. And a 2 next to the oxygen. And now we want to write the whole thing down. So we have Mg2O2. Now, technically, we can reduce. Technically, we can reduce. So if I have 2 divided by 2, what does that equal? 2 divided by 2 equals 1. So since I have two of both of these, I can reduce it and say MgO. And so my final answer would be Li3N plus MgO, lithium nitride plus magnesium oxide. Remember, we changed the endings to IDE. All right, let's do another example. I have aluminum fluoride plus boron sulfur. Fate. So let's go ahead and do step one. Write the charge or oxidation number as an exponent next to each element or polyatomic ion. So what is our charge of aluminum? Aluminum is in group three, so it has a plus three charge. Or you could work backwards and say, well, I know that there's a three down here, and that three came from the fact that aluminum has three electrons to get rid of. And so in order to get rid of all three, it has to have three atoms of fluorine to give them to. Fluorine is in group seven. What's the charge? Minus one. And we knew that from the one down there, even though we don't write it. All right, now what about boron? Boron is in group three. So group three again, has a positive 3 charge. And now I have SO4 in parentheses. What does that tell you? Well, I have three total capital letters, so I have three elements. So that means I have a polyatomic ion. Look on your polyatomic ion sheet for SO4. It's in parentheses. It's a family. We keep it together. 
and what is the oxidation number or the charge? Minus two. All right, step two, write the first cation as a product, write the new anion partner next to it. So let's write down aluminum. Aluminum has a plus three charge. And what is its new partner? This always reminds me of foil. Remember foil from math class? If you haven't had it yet, that's fine. Don't worry about it. But foil has the outside go together. So my two outside ones go together. And then it has the inside ones go together. So it's like the oi, a foil. Or you can just say aluminum is positive, so it has to go with which one? Positive and negative attract. So it has to go with the SO4. Now, I have to keep the 4. Why? Because it's part of the polyatomic ion family. I do not bring over this 3 because that 3 is from where? That 3 was from the fact that boron had a charge of plus 3. So you only bring over the subscript if it's part of the polyatomic ion family. All right, so let's go ahead and combine this. We need two aluminums in order to make this become a new chemical compound. And we need three SO4s. So let's go ahead and write this as a new chemical compound. We have Al2SO43, except we don't want it to look like 43, so what do I need? Parentheses around the whole polyatomic ion family. All right, let's do our last chemical compound. So which one do we write first, the F or the B? You have to write boron first. Why? Because it's positive. And then we will write fluorine second because it's negative. Now notice, I did not bring this three over. I did not bring this two over. No. You only bring over subscripts if it's part of a polyatomic ion family. That's it. All right, so let's do what looks like cross multiplying. Bring the charges down. So the plus three from boron means that I'm going to need three atoms of fluorine to make it happy. And one atom of boron is all that it takes. I rewrite it nice and neatly. I have B. You don't need to write the one. F3. Now, in this case, it just so happens that the F was three and the SO4 was three on the left or reactant side and on the product side, it's okay if it happens that way, but the only reason it did is because I picked two elements from the same group as the cations, okay? So you always have to start over. So make sure you follow these steps. As always, come let me know when you need help.